Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, Four Nerds by Nerds, hanging out with Nathan Nerdark. Nerdark is dead. And today we're crafting adventures for new DMs using the five W's. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So in this video, we want to basically lay out a, a formula for new dungeon masters to make it easier for you to create some of your first adventures. When it comes to writing, you've heard of the five W's. Well, those things can very well easily apply to writing your campaign material. And they can really help you jumpstart uh, when you need an idea that, and to start off. All right, so speaking of starting off, where do we start? So let's just run down the list and then we can talk about how they would be useful to a, a new dungeon master, or even an old dungeon master for that matter, and how you might use them. So, uh, so we have who, we have where, we have what, we have why, we have when. Some of the, you may use some of these, you may use all of them. It, it doesn't really matter, whatever gets your, your creative juices flowing, whatever, whatever works for you. So we can start off with who... Or where, because there's sometimes they're going to be they're going to be very interchangeable. Yeah, it really just comes down to: Do you want to do an adventure that is location based, or do you want to do an adventure that is is based based on the an antagonist in the story? So off camera, you talked about if you're planning the Tomb of Horrors, this is far more important to have the where than it is to have the who. In this in that case, you would just shuck. The who you chuck the who, the who, and continue on from there. Right. And if you're going to focus on the who, and you have your big bad evil guy, he you want him to show up someplace. Well, you're kind of like, well, it doesn't really matter where he shows up. He just needs to be introduced to the characters and and have an encounter with them. Yeah. So chances are, like, you may you may even ignore one of these, or they just kind of become play second fiddle to everything else. Right. You know, they they're just not as important. You know, whether you got a, you got a location as a GM, you're just dying to introduce into your game like an aquatic dungeon or you just absolutely need this particular villain in your game that half fiend minotaur you know whatever dropping through the sewers <laughs> <laughs> so you know let, let's let's get in into the who when you're designing the the who as as your number one slot you want to get into the nitty-gritty of who this is and focus on the details that you need to know now and you can fill in other stuff later based off of how much interaction the party winds up having with him if you only need a stat block because it's going to be a combat okay great but if you want to get more into the role-playing aspect you know have more of the story behind him and you can work on powers later and if you just want to do a bare bones kind of skeletal sketch of what an encounter is you can go on to the next question would be what does he want so you've got who it is, so then what does the person actually want to attain or, or put forth in the world? Right. Once, once you've gone figured out your primary, is it a place, is it a person, then you know, all your other W's are going to kind of be, start informing that decision. Like when you talk about the who, also there's a great resource in the DMG that you can check out where it talks about fleshing out NPCs. And matter of fact, when we get to, you know, get to these other parts... You know, for flushing out your adventure, you might want to refer to that, and it's going to be super useful. And there's also like a section in there for creating random dungeons and stuff like that, and what might be in there. That's another part that would be really useful if you're trying to figure out the place and you're trying to fill it with interesting things for your players to interact with. So, as you said, you know the the what. You know, if it's a if it's a villain, if it's a person, it's your primary focus. Well, how does this interact with that? Well, what do they want? Right? What is their motivation? Yeah. Have, having access to goals is going to determine not you know not only what they're trying to do but what ways that they might actually go to, to accomplish those things. Yeah, I, and at the end, I think we'll we'll start we'll just like start randomly creating a a scenario based off of this for you guys as an example. Now, if you're also talking about the if we're talking about the what and it's not a person but a place, then you know. Then the what is, what is going on there now? Why are the players going to get involved? Why would they want to go there? Why is this now an adventure? So as opposed to why does, the, you know, the, the what of it is why, why do the players have to deal with it in some way, shape, or form instead of the, 
villain setting these events into motion, you have something that is within that is causing the players to come there. Exactly. And so kind of like the what and the why kind of begin to blur together. As you can see just in us talking, right? <laughs> you know, what is he doing if it's a villain? Well, then the why is really more prevalent because why is he doing it? You know, what if his, what is his motivation? Again, that NPC section, NPC section in the DMG is awesome because it actually has these. I mean, uh, Nate ran a, a whole game based off of that. Randomly rolling and figuring out his villain. And then, like... Then the things just started happening. And really, I think even if you weren't using this method, you were using this method. Oh, yeah. Uh, I yeah. was, yeah. yeah. Even though I wasn't, you know, marking the check boxes off on it. Yeah. But this is just another way for you guys to approach it, to think about it. Because sometimes, sometimes uh, GMs will ask us questions. How do you do this? How do you do that? And really, and we've literally, the reason why we're doing this video is because we've cited the five W's before. Like... If you think along those lines, all those questions that you, you have and you're trying to figure out, they kind of start to get answered. Lastly, we have when. Now, this one isn't always relevant. Like, this one you can probably chuck, or it might actually inform things. Like, if, if it's, especially if it's uh, location-based, you know, if there's different ages that have gone by, like, they may, they may change the, that place and make it look different. It may maybe make it, it maybe it's being used different now than it was before, so so that one, eh, you know, it may not be relevant, and you're gonna have to pick and choose what works for you while you're crafting your adventure. When is one of those things that it can lead to giving the players actual choice? You know, when when you look at well, when does something become relevant? When is it important? This is where you can get things and have. Um, you know, astrological signs that is like, oh, well, this is based off of some kind of prediction or, you know, what, what have you. And that's, you know, where it's cited. In your game, we had to stop, some, you know, an event from happening before a certain timetable. So we knew well before we got there that it's like, well, we've got time to kill. They have to spread out across the entire world and find four of these locations and do this thing right at the exact time. So we knew going into it, like, okay, well, we've got some time to prepare. We've got some time to plan. Meanwhile, let's go do this other thing. So this, this could be your, your symptom or your cause to be able to say, well, let's underlie a secondary plot or the main plot has to appeal and hold so you go on to something else and it allows you to plan your campaign out that they're going to go do this encounter at some point in time but they're not strong enough to deal with it so you can allow them to know you don't have to do this yet pacing it, you know it, it can come back into like pacing more than anything so now let's kind of like talk about like maybe an example a little all right bit. so if we're using like a location of where maybe there's a mine right that it's been abandoned, it's in disuse, but you know, outside of this village um, that's at the foot of the mountains, there's mines. So then we have we have our place. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple things we, we kind of have to a answer, and we can go to the who, we can go, well, who made the mines? You was, know, it, was it human? Was it dwarf? Was it gnome? Each of those things is going to determine, you know, what was the, the course or cause of that mine. Yeah, it will also inform some other things like, you know, like the layout. You know, if it was made by gnomes as opposed to humans, you know, you know, the ceilings might be much lower and things like that. They don't use much overhead. So, so let's let's go with that to make it a, a interesting and challenging, or more challenging encounter for the players since that that height is going to be an issue. Okay. Well, that being said, so there, so we can kind of like. Um, we can, we can go to go to the what, which would be what's going on now that will cause, you know, the cause this become relevant in the game. And we could say, well, n this is where we can actually visit the, the when a little bit and go, well, it was made by gnomes. They, they've been mining it. Then what, ha what happened was they were overrun by kobolds. And it happened a long time ago. But, you know, kind of the question becomes, you know, what's going on now that makes it relevant? So we were going to go, we're going to delve into that a little bit. And, you know, perhaps uh, the kobolds have been there for generations and breeding and breeding and breeding. 
they're kind of out of room and they need to expand. So that's going to push them out into the countryside looking for more space, looking for more food, which now it becomes a relevant thing to the local villages and to any adventurers that are willing to help out because they're becoming a nuisance, they're becoming a problem. And that bleeds right into our five W's of why. You know, why it's happening now is because they need more space, they need more room, you know, and, you know, now the event, now someone has to deal with the, this, this uh, plague of kobolds. And the, the when would have to fall into more of an immediate concern because it's a significant problem to anyone that's in the area. Yeah, because what they are doing is they're ransacking uh, farmers' places, you know, eating their food, to, might even be killing them, uh, taking their, their resources, and also harassing villagers and other things like that. Yeah, yeah. so the, the when, you know, kind of informs what happened before, informs what's going on now. So if you look at it, like, just by answering those questions, where we've got mines, who who is actually two things right here, Used to be gnomes, but now it's kobolds. Yep. The what? Uh, there's too many now, so somebody's going to have to deal with it. And that, well, the what leads us right to the why. Someone has to deal with it because there, there's they an left overflow. Unchecked. Yeah, they're left unchecked. There's an overflow of kobolds, and it's happening right now because of things that happened in the past. And right there, you have the premise for an adventure. You could use this in a lot of different ways. I think as new GMs, we overthink it. But if you can just work, work through asking yourself a series of questions, it's going to, the adventure will begin to write itself. And once you get one adventure under your belt and your players begin interacting with the campaign and the world, the rest becomes so much easier. So when you get into you know, writing with the five W's, uh, a lot of people you know, say who, what, when, where, why, and then how. So once you look at the, the how, which is kind of the, the bonus, is... How are the players going to actually deal with it? And that's actually what happens at your table. Yeah, they get to they get to have all the fun with the H to themselves, pretty much. So the question is, have you used this for your creation of adventures in your games? Uh, is it something you would use in the future? So let us know in the, in the comments below. While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. You can patronize us in a good way over on Patreon. Don't forget to hang out with us over on Facebook. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.